If you wanted to observe and measure how much people weigh, you could use a scale to collect data. And if you wanted to observe and measure how fast people are, you could use a timer to collect data. But what if you wanted to observe and measure how happy people are? How could you define happiness in a way that you both can clearly define it so you know what you're looking for, but also collect data? And not just happiness. What if you wanted to observe and measure how anxious people are, or how bored people are, or how much pain people are in? Now it's not easy, but in psychology and across the sciences, we do have a solution to this problem. And the answer is operational definitions. And in this video, we're going to explain how we define variables using operational definitions and the significance of it. So let's get started. Now to better understand operational definitions, let's first take a look at a study that has poorly operationalized variables. In other words, sometimes the best way to understand a concept is to talk about it when things go wrong, right? That should provide some clarity into what this term actually means. So here's our study. We want to know how aggressive boys are. Now, as a father of a five-year-old boy, I can tell you they could be quite aggressive. And the researchers are setting up the study where children are playing and they're tallying or documenting how many acts of aggression they see. So let's play out the study. We have two researchers, as I said before. Let's start with the first one. We have, we'll call this one researcher, researcher A. And then we also have the second one. We have researcher B, okay? So we have researcher A and researcher B. And they're both set up in a place where they're looking at the exact same thing at the exact same time. So we'll say A is here, right? They're looking this way. And we have B here, right? Right next to each other. And after about an hour of watching kids play, right, they're documenting, here are their findings. Researcher A documented six acts of aggression. Okay, that's researcher A. And researcher B documents five, 10, 15, and 16. So we have two researchers looking at the exact same thing, but coming away with different results. Why? It's because both of them didn't have a clear definition of what aggression is. You see, researcher A defined aggressive, aggressiveness as only physical acts, right? Punching and kicking and hitting, right? You'll likely see that on a playground. But researcher B defined aggression as both physical acts, but also verbal right? Maybe swearing or yelling or shouting. So the idea of this study and why this is a great example of operational definitions is that if you don't clearly define your variables, you're going to have inconsistent results and researchers are going to be looking for different things. And this is a perfect segue into what operational definitions actually are. Now, the reason we call these operational definitions is because an operation is another word for a procedure. So we're essentially saying how we defining the procedures or activities in the study. And the way we're going to define it is this way. It is a process by which a psychologist defines how a concept is. And there's two things I want you to think about. The first one is defines how a concept or variable is observed. That's our first part. And secondly, how a concept or variable is measured, okay? So there's our operational definition. We want to know how a concept or variable in a study can be observed and how it can be measured. Now let's break those down. What do we mean by that? Observed essentially means that we have clearly, right, clearly and specifically defined, specifically, define the variables or concepts in our study. So that if two people are looking at the same thing, they know exactly what to look for. There's no ambiguity or unclearness in terms of their variables. Okay, so that's the first one. We are clearly and specifically defining the variables in our study. The second part is we have to measure our variables. And what this means is when you collect data, you have to be collecting numbers, right? You have to have some sort of data collection something quantifiable that you're taking away. So when we break down operational definitions, what we're saying is this, 
for every concept or variable in our study. Can you observe it clearly? And how are we measuring it? What data are we taking away? So there's our definition. So let's do an example study together to identify our variables or concepts, how do we observe it, and then how do we actually measure it and collect data from it. Our study is, how does social media affect teenagers' mental health? Now this is something pervasive in the news today, right? Everybody's on their phone. But the question is, does it have an impact on a teenager's mind? Now what variables or concepts do we need to observe and define or measure? Well, there's a few of them. The first one you could say is, okay, what is the independent variable and what is the dependent variable in our study? Well, the dependent variable is what you are measuring. And what we're measuring is mental health, right? So this would be one of our variables or concepts, which means mental health is dependent on social media. So that would be our independent variable, right? So we have our independent and we have our dependent, okay? So those are variables we need to observe and measure. But also we have our participants and they are a variable as well. We have teenagers and we need to define what a teenager is so we know what to look for. So let's actually start with our teenagers as our first variable, our participants. So we have teenagers and you might be thinking, really, we have to define what teenagers are? Yes, because we have to clearly and specifically state what we are observing. So we're going to define teenagers as any age, any age that ends, that ends in teen, okay? any age that ends in teen. So 11 and 12 don't, but 13 does. So we're gonna start with 13 and we'll go to 18, right? Those are ages that end in teen. So that is our participants. And we could also identify what would not be included in our observation, right? So what not would be included is, you know, anybody who is, you know, younger, less than 12 and anybody older or greater than 19. So one thing you can do with operational definitions is say, what are you looking for and what are you not looking for? So we clearly and specifically define it. Now, how would we measure that? Or how do we actually collect data from ages? Well, we can just do a bunch of tally marks, right? In other words, the people in our study. Let's say we have a 13 year old and a 14 year old and a 15 year old and so on and so on. Well, what we want to do is find out how many people in the study are from each age group, right? So maybe we have, you know, three people who are 13, we have six people who are 14, we have two people who are 15, and so on and so on. In this way, we're collecting data, some numerical value on our ages, all right? So we have observed, we've specifically defined our variable and how we're gonna collect data from it. So what's another one? Let's start with social media, and this one's hard because we hear the, the phrase social media, but what does it actually mean? Social media. So how do we clearly define social media in the way we all can understand it? Now we're gonna define this as any website, website or app, okay? Now we're gonna break this down again, website or app, that allows users, allows users, that's you and me, to share and create content. Create content, okay? This is kind of the more formal definition of what a social media uh, platform might be. So it's any website or app that allows users to share or create content. Now that could be a lot of things, but our examples are gonna be things like Facebook and TikTok and Twitter and Instagram, right? Those fit the definition of social media. So what would not fit the definition? Things like Google, right? A search engine, right? So we're not looking for things like that. Uh, or WebMD, right? We're looking for platforms where individuals like you and me are sharing information, messages, videos, and so forth and so forth. Now, how can we actually measure social media? One thing we could do is set up something called a frequency distribution. And essentially what we're doing is just collecting data on how often things occur, right? This could be tally marks like you see right here. And essentially there's two questions we're really asking to gather data from. First is what are they using, right? What social media platforms, websites and apps, not Google, are they using? You know, you might have some data like this where I have, you know, TikTok and I might find out, you know, that something like 90% of teens 
are using TikTok, but only 20% are using Twitter. The second question to collect data is how often, right? How often are they using this, right? So TikTok, they're on for 90, you know, they use 90% uh, of teens use TikTok. And then I ask, you know, how often they use it. And I might find something like they're on it 15 times a day. Okay, so therefore I've identified specific social media use and how often they use it. So there's my measured variables. Now the last one is, this is a big one, mental health. Okay, just as big as social media. Now we really gotta break this down, right? If you say you're studying mental health, that can mean a million things, right? Just like social media. Now mental health is essentially your psychological and emotional well-being. But there's a lot of stuff, right? That could be anxiety, that could be depression, it could be a lot of other issues. But what we're gonna focus on to make this more manageable and clearly define what we're looking for is we're gonna focus on stress, right? We're gonna observe stress which essentially turns our question into how does social media affect teenagers' stress, right? You can kind of think about it that way. Now, stress is your body's response to pressure or your body's response to a stressor. But what are we actually looking for, right? We need something to observe. And what we're going to observe are really two things. We are gonna observe physical symptoms, okay? Now, what would that be? Physical symptoms could be dizziness and nausea and headaches and cramps and digestive issues, right? Things that you can observe and ask. And also psychological, right? There are psychological symptoms or emotional symptoms that go along with stress, right? Irritability and moodiness and anxiety and depression. So we're specifically looking for, if I write this again, we're looking for symptoms. That's what we're going to observe. Symptoms. Okay, that's what we're gonna observe. So what is not, for example, mental health? You know, we're not looking for, you know, specific mental illnesses like, you know, bipolar disorder. That's not what we're going for. Uh, we're not talking about obsessive compulsive disorder. We're specifically looking at stress-related stuff, okay? So how do we measure? How do we collect data on stress? Well, there's a few things. We can give a questionnaire to our participants, okay? Uh, and there's two parts to this questionnaire. We can have a, you know, a psychological part to this questionnaire, a psychological stress scale. And how we can collect data from the stress scale uh, is essentially a scale of one to 10, right? On a scale of one to 10, one being never, 10 being always, how irritable are you, right? How stressed do you feel? How, how much does your mood change? Are you getting good sleep? So we can do some sort of psychological questionnaire or stress scale. But also remember, stress can impact your body. So we can also measure physiological things. Physiological, right? And what would be a physiological thing? That would be something like you know, your blood pressure, right? We have a lot of evidence that when you're stressed, you know, that could increase your blood pressure. Or maybe your stress hormones, like you know, we'll measure the amount of cortisol in your body or brain activity. So regardless of what it is, what we're looking for is have we clearly define it in a way that let's say 10 psychologists are looking for the exact same thing and how are we measuring it? What data are we collecting from our variables? Now here's our last big question. Why do we do this? Why is it so important to operationally define our variables? And there's two big reasons. The first one is replication. So what is replication? Well, we're really referring to replication as copying. Okay. If another researcher asks you, Hey, what did you do? I want to copy your study to see if I get the same results. Well, you need able to verbalize them specifically what you did to see if they get the same results, right? Imagine you came up with a cure for cancer. The world is not going to blindly accept those results. There's gonna be thousands of labs around the world that are gonna to try to replicate and copy your study to see if they get the same results. In order for them to copy it, they have to know exactly what you did, right? How much of a dose did you give? How often did you give the patient that dose? What was the active ingredient uh, in that medication, right? You need to operationally define it so somebody else can replicate your same study. And the second one is what we're gonna label as reliability. Reliability. And another name for reliability is consistency. 
That means if 10 people are looking at the exact same thing, there should be consistency or reliability in what they're looking at. The same thing we talked about with our aggression study, right? They were looking at two different things. There was inconsistencies. There was, there was an unreliable uh, way to look at it. So we need some consistency, some interrelated reliability when it comes to doing a study. All right, guys, thanks for watching. I really hope you took something away. Before we finish, I want you to try a couple operational definitions on your own. We have six concepts. We have love, pain, boredom, hunger, anxiety, and intelligence. And the question is, how do we observe and both measure these variables? So practice on your own. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe. I'll see you next time.